So forgive me if I get delirious slightly during this. The temperature outside, I think the technical term for it is fucking hot. In the region of about 35 degrees Celsius, and for you weirdos who use Fahrenheit, it's about, I don't know, 300 million? Something like that, isn't it? I think that's how Fahrenheit works. Anyway, let's get on with this, shall we? Now, this is a real cave. Well done for putting that out, Treacle. Droplets of water echoed in the puddles as we walked carefully through the cavern. Care led the way happily. You sure? It looks like the last one we were in. Are you kidding? There's more tunnels, it's sediments, and mostly limestone, and the roof is higher. Leave it to an earth dragon to know his surroundings. Oh, God. He's being a snob, isn't he? Because he's a, he's one of these people who goes, Oh, well, you don't know what Korean looks like. Oh, my God, you're an idiot, aren't you? Just because they happen to know this kind of shit. I, I can't really complain about that. I laughed the other day when someone didn't know who wrote Das Kapital. I like underwater caves. They make great lairs. Ilmari seemed very cheery as well. The numerous branching tunnels made me nervous, but my companions seemed unfazed by it all. I don't get it, it's like you know where you're going, dragon intuition? Kerr groaned and Ilmari shot me a penitent look. We actually came here earlier, thanks to a heaven kind's help. How was I supposed to know that? Don't give me that look! <laughs> oh god, here we are, the human kind is being stupid again. <sighs> Whatever. So much for the promise to not wander off. I know, but Kerr was determined, and I didn't want to let him out of my sight. However, Master Bedros wishes for him to be accompanied by Heavenkind at each altar to prove he's not going straight from one cave to the other. And not just any Heavenkind, but one that has been there with him the whole time. So, if he fell down... Like, no, if we did catch him sleeping before, and chose not to do it, and he woke up by himself, he's fucked. Harsh. Wouldn't your word be good enough, Ilmari, or overseeing the whole thing? Yes, I reckon they can see it as well. He shifted nervously. Uh, no. It sounds like you have no influence here. D something like that. Then why are you here? <laughs> Kerr and I will get along great. You're just annoying. I said last episode, he has a very punchable face. I arched an eyebrow dubiously, but before I could question further, Kerr announced we had arrived. There's a small carved statue of an earth dragon set on a block. Kerr gestured accusingly at it before turning to me. Uh, I even have to try to make impressive ones? Think we would be pleased by this? A life-size one would be more worthy. Well, that would take... Uh, I suppose we are supposed to worship them. Like... <laughs> I, I, I kind of understand where he's coming from here. Go humbly beg for his forgiveness. I gave him a gentle shove and stuck out my tongue. He glared, but his usual intensity had diminished somewhat. I was planning to remain where I was, but I saw Elmari retreat to give Kerr some space. Was he about to take a golf swing? I do not like the look on Elmari's face. Not staying? Uh, no, I don't want to feel like I'm eavesdropping on a private conversation. Doesn't matter, I can't hear them anyway. I reflected back on the argument at the first altar. It doesn't seem that personal to me, and you can only hear Kerr speak. That did not convince Ilmari, and he merely kept walking back until he had vanished around the bend. Maybe Ilmari had a point, as I turned. Hey, where are you going? To give you some privacy? Did you forget already? You have to stay your heaven kind. Yeah, exactly, so they can see me. <laughs> Christ, I mean, we could just, I don't know, put Ilmari in the stocks and no one would care or notice. Right, right. I shifted my weight until I felt comfortable. I kept my arms behind my back as I watched Kerneal down, then close his eyes to focus. Moments later, his ears perked up. I wonder even how that works, his ears perking up. Just bits of solid wood go up slightly. Yeah, she's here now, so picky. Mm -hmm. Yes, we left a Perry Berry and helped something called a carriage get to Oliver. <laughs> Help something called a carriage. Christ. We were attacked, heaven kind fists are pretty useful. I covered my mouth as I smirked at the comment. Yeah, he's smirking as well. From there, Kerr chronicled the sights and sounds of the plaza. Heaven kind likes to pretend to do things they actually can't do for the sake of people clapping. They're driven to form odd things like eating fire. Is that even edible? You're missing the point. He also mentioned the presence of other dragon kind. He concludes his account and after a few minutes stood up, he placed one hand on his hip and he stared at the statue deep in thought. When I was sure the conversation was over, I approached him and leaned in. Is that everything? Yeah. I thought he was going to get shocked at that and be like, Dad, what are you doing? 
That wouldn't have surprised me. Did he say how many altars to visit afterward? Thankfully, there's only a few left, and there's many around Oliver. Many around Oliver. Okay, so there's four left. So there's probably four, isn't there? Fire, water, air, and earth. You would say electricity, but the fourth one is earth, which means that one... The third one must be air, right? So I leave it in your hands to get some interesting night quests. You can count on me, and I think I still owe you a visit to the marketplace. We can restock on some <laughs> supplies. Tarts. Or cookies. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Ha! That's a reference five people will get. We rejoined Ilmari and returned to the bustling market of Central Oliver. What I thought would only take the morning ended up going straight to mid-afternoon, given how much we explored all the various shops and stalls. Well, is probably staring at every bit of glass. At the end, I was pretty much haggard. Again, there's... I can feel that thesaurus smashing me around the face. I slumped down on the bench between my companions, blankly gazing at the sky. It's like babysitting kids, overgrown kids. Hey, they're men. You're supposed to expect that. I think you'll find. Ilmari was happily. Oh my god, what is that face? He looks like a fucking cat. Ilmari was happily clutching a small glass blown bubble. He held it up, and his transparent blue surface shimmered like waves in the sunlight. He's gonna break it. I still can't believe you bought me this. I've never had anything heaven kind made before. How can I not? You were making that face. Uh. Yep, yeah, I can. I. Again, very, very punchable face. Very punchable. Oh dear. Uh, where were we? This one. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's still punchable. Like that. Right. <laughs> Normally, people let Omari write, but his sort of character appears to be exaggerated to the extreme. His expression changed, assuming the epitome of sweat, sweetness and innocence that had crumbled my defences before. Nope, still not seeing it. Yes, that one. Maybe he wasn't so sweet and innocent if he was using that face to his advantage. Kerr was nonchalantly stuffing his own face with various desserts and pastries. He's gonna get fat, isn't he? I placed my hand over my forehead before sliding it down to my chin in aggravation. I said, eat a few, not all of them. At least we found something he likes. Whoa! I think you'll find, Ilmari, that I am here. So, uh, push off! I don't even know what he's doing here. I'd prefer it was something that wouldn't give him a sugar rush. Kerr pursed his lips but said nothing since he was still preoccupied with chewing. I'm amazed he chewed. That's impressive. And he's, like, learnt it. He hasn't gone, oh, fucker, I'll still swallow it whole. And he's still doing it. That's impressive. Now that we were all settled, I stood up and stretched Argent Valair on my mind. I'm going to check the guild and see if there's any postings I could accept for tomorrow. Get something to do with fighting. I'd prefer if it was a more peaceful one. Fighting, 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 Jerry, Jerry. No, not that kind of fight. I'll see what I can do. I doubt I can find one that'll please you both. I gave him a quick wave, intending not to take as long as I headed for the guild. Inside the headquarters, I surveyed the giant board, hoping to find something that would catch my eye. Yeah. Which one? Which mission should we do? Oh wow, we can, can we actually pick? Oh damn, we can. Boom. I like this. Gathered five nightshades. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hang on. I need these completely harmless herbs for, num for something not sinister. <laughs> Why would you write that on a book? Like, if you don't want to seem suspicious, you're just going to go, ha. Well, I want you to bring this person back alive. And I won't torture them. <laughs> That's not something you do. You just go, bring this person back. I want to question them. I need 10 jars of honey from Red Bee's hives for a new recipe I've been developing. <laughs> Reward. Free samples. Guess what we're not doing. Um, I play the lead for a ballet and I simply must have some aviteral feathers to adore my black swan costume. Fighting. Fighting. Battle tournament? Are you the greatest warrior in the guild? Try and find out. Oh, come on. We can't. <laughs> would, the, would Kerr be able to enter? No, let's not do that one. We, we might just do this one to save the chickens. Alright, maybe not. Maybe this one. Ten coins seems a little low, but whatever. I go fishing, Sapphire Simon are in season, however my back is sore and I'm unable to fish. Can you catch three for me? 
Um, <laughs> that apostrophe as well. So it's like, no, go fishing. No, not even a G, right? Let's see this one. Rescue mission. Aurelie immediately jumped on this one, thinking it was a crucial quest. She was disappointed when it turned out to be a child missing a cat and was determined to help no matter how big or small the task. Quick question, why is Kerr naked? He doesn't appear to have any clothing on, and that's not a natural thing for that body. I mean, Christ, he looks like Morph. Oh, well. We looked all over Oliver and found the cat stuck in a tree, which Kerr easily retrieved. Just as I was about to assume he was a secretly an animal lover at heart, it scratched him and he returned it to the tree. Orally ended up saving the cat, since Kerr refused to go near it again. The child was happy to get his pet back. I find heaven kind attachment to their pets rather fascinating. Yep, I find it's... I, I don't get it at all. Alright, so is that going to be it for all of them? In that case... You got it. You got it. Since Omari banned any quests that involve fighting other heaven kind, we decided to focus on wildlife. Banned quests which involve fighting other heaven kind? Like, I... What? So that means we're not going to be able to do the guild one for bragging rights? Damn it. After that rather embarrassing encounter with an avatar all back when I couldn't walk, I decided to get my revenge. <laughs> on an irrelevant avatar all! Well, whatever. It was so bizarre fighting an animal that could be crushed under my claws and not immediately eating it either. Punching it out in midair was oddly satisfying, though what even Aura and Il- Fucking hell, look at him calling me Aura. Fucking. Not even first name terms now. We're shortening each other names. We're on nickname terms. That's how cool we are. Could only stand around and gawk or shake their heads. I didn't get the appeal of decorating yourself in feathers, though heaven kind culture makes no sense. Amen to that. Right, uh, let's gather five night shades because I feel this one will be amusing. Heaven kind seemed to possess immense knowledge about plants, nearly rivaling our own. We were able to find the required herbs easily. Well, until Kerr taunted some wolves. <laughs> are they going to come and like? Scratchy. I hope they are. By the way, your feet are too small. Like, honestly. If your foot is a nub, I'm amazed you're able to walk. Sometimes I can't decide who loves the thrill of battle more, or Ali or Kerr. I mean, it looks like there's only Kerr in there, doesn't it? Oh, whatever. They got into a fight over who defeated the most beasts afterwards, too. Okay, so it's both of us. I really had fun, though. It's rare I get to walk around and see land flora. Amen to that. Battle tournament. Yeah! Let's go and fight someone. No, I'm not doing this. Don't even think about it. Alright, harsh. Then again, we could face someone like the mountain and... <laughs> six foot nine and be like a brick shit house. <laughs> Scary. No, sod you. We're doing that again. No, nope, no matter how much curve has this me, I'm not doing it. We're fucking doing it. Ugh, no, Kerr would probably face bets against me just to spite me if he knew how to gamble. Come on. Ah, oh, it's just saying the same thing. I want to do it, though. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, go fishing, save the chickens. I just want coins, if I'm honest. I never had the patience for fishing, and this task nearly took us all day. While Ilmari was watching the bait, Kerr thought it would be hilarious to push him in the river. <laughs> it would be quite funny. We learned that Ilmari couldn't swim in his heaven kind form, and Kerr learned how f far Ilmari's neck can extend from shore when he's in dragon form. Ilmari decided it would be faster if he fra if he just found the fish in town on his own. Oh, okay. I was going to say, in town? That's cheating. I had to shout at him not to bother the boats, though. He seemed to enjoy this mission a lot. Oh, is that it? So you've only done the one with the coins? Eh, there's probably a good reason behind that. I stood in front of the board, scanning for various job postings as usual. Kerr and Ilmari were standing behind me, also examining the board. Why are we not going to altars? Like, we've done four jobs and not a single one on our way we've done. Uh, pff, whatever. Although they were probably trying to assist me, I knew they would be no, of no actual help. Neither of them could read, and Kerr simply picked out postings on a whim. What about this one? That's a battle tournament. I'm not doing it. Like, <laughs> this is the fifth time. You must have realised by now. A shame. I think that sounds rather entertaining. What about this one? He tapped the one beside the first posting he suggested. I glanced up and noticed the writing was identical, save for an additional request for yet another tournament. <laughs> tournament participant at the bottom. It's the same one. No, it's not. This is a different one. Anyway, slim pickings this week. Oh, there's another herb gathering one. Kerr groaned and looked at me resentfully. I would too. They're dull. We don't want to do those. Boring. I don't mind those too much. I do. We want to be fighting. Even if it is just a cat. Wait. 
Until we ran into that pack of wolves during the last one, could we do something more within the town? True, let's do that. Okay, I choose this one and no objections. I, they can't read. Just don't tell what it. Don't tell them what it is and go. Easy. What is it? Delivering some donated books to the library. Just have to pick them up first. A knight has to do that. They could have got a child to do that from the local bakery for. Yeah, whatever. Our books. You don't like those. I wouldn't say I dislike them, just I've never been a big reader. Anyway, I'll let the receptionist know and we'll be on our way. Kerr shrugged apathetically. I'll pass on this one. Suit yourself, you're simply prolonging your being stuck in a heaven kind form. But why? Like We've done like... was it? This is our fifth job and we still haven't gone to an auto and are prolonging... By taking jobs, we're just prolonging things unnecessarily. Elmari, let's go. I think it'll be a nice little trip for us at least. Kerr, I trust you'll be fine on your own. I highly doubt that. He scoffed and tapped his hip crossly. Yes, I've been in Oliver long enough. I'm not a hatchling. Take then. Take care then. Uh, we'll see you later. After I had notified the receptionist, we soon arrived at the pickup location for the donations. An elderly woman with a cane gestured to a wagon full of books in various conditions, and I thanked her as I wheeled it out onto the street. It's going to take more than books, isn't it? I. I. I, there's going to be something really dangerous in there. Hmm. Oh well. I paused when I noticed Ilmari hovering by the pile, reaching out a hand as if he wanted to examine one. I gave him a nod and he curiously opened a book and then turned it around multiple times as he peered at the writing. He's going to pick up a picture book and be like, Oh, this is better! And I'm like, shut up, you child! Something like that. How do these things work, anyway? Whenever you decide on a job posting, it's as if all the information is magically linked to you and you gain the knowledge. Are these some sort of spells? I laughed and shook my head. No, it's nothing that amazing. Once, If you know how to read, you can understand what's written. If you want, I can teach you. No. No, 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 no. Really? Oh, for fuck's sake, there's those eyes. He hugged the book close and beamed knee keenly. I'd like that. Come on, I think you'll love this library. It's full of these things. Oh yeah, but you're not allowed to talk inside, so we'll have to be quiet. His face fell. Oh, I'll probably have lots of questions. Whisper then, that's what everyone does. Inside the library, even I stood agape beside Ilmari. I'd never seen so many rows of endless shelves in one building before. It's a library, I mean, what were they expecting? Whatever. Sensing Elmari's eagerness to explode the library, I delivered the wagon to the receptionist as swiftly as I could. Once I received the slip I had completed the errand, I quickened my pace and followed Elmari. He grinned as we walked side by side down one of the aisles. As I scanned some of the titles, I realised we were in the history section. Yeah, that's a wonderful place to start off with. Where is Das Kapital, anyway? Oh, Christ, you accidentally skipped one. Elmari looked ready to burst with a million questions, and I recalled what I said earlier. Um, you can talk, just in a soft voice. He appeared relieved and exhaled deeply. It looks like anyone is allowed in the library. Yep. <laughs> this isn't dragons! <laughs> we can't see people, it's just like, speak. Potato, you Irish, fuck off! Like... <laughs> Christ almighty. Racism. Yeah, anyone can enter and borrow some books. Borrow? Uh, yeah, you can take a book, but you have to return it into the library since it's theirs. That way, more people can enjoy reading the same book later. Ilmari's eyes lit up, and he started pulling random books off the shelves. I extended a hand to stop him. Just a few. You can only take a few. Oh. He picked one out, and I led him to one of the tables. So, we say a few, and he's, like, disappointed. It's like, oh, fuck it, I'll just take one, then. Moany, fussy little child. After we sat down, he opened the book in the middle, pushed it between us, and beamed at me expectantly. Can you read this to me? Um, sure, let's see. He's actually just a child, isn't he? Ah, oh, this covered agriculture. Boring. With a gradual ac accumulation of investment in te technical a a amelioration? As I stammered over the more difficult words, Ilmari poked at the page in disenchantment. You can't read it either? His disappointed face was utterly heart <laughs> And I felt like I'd failed him. I shot up from my chair fervently. I can! Immediately receiving a wave of hushes, I lowered my voice and sat down in the chagrin. It's just, you picked a high level book, I would need a dictionary to understand this confusing mess. Oh, the irony! 